Thank you very much, and just really grateful that you're here joining us to discuss the fentanyl synthoid, synthetic opioid epidemic that we're facing, not only in Washington, but also in the U.S., and I would argue even globally. Uh, the AMA recently said that teen overdoses doubled in the last three years. And one of the most alarming things they're also sharing is that you can get same-day delivery of fentanyl, which is being marketed to kids on Snapchat. This is a crisis. This is something we have to address and prioritize. I've been fortunate through the process to complete, or almost complete, two bills. Very excited how fast they're moving and how much support we have from my great colleagues. The first bill is Ivan's Law, and Ivan was a amazing 24-year-old basketball player who played ball in my hometown gym in Goldendale, Washington. He fought fentanyl for years and years in and out of the systems, and this summer took his life in our Klickitat County Jail. It's heartbreaking to see what we go through, but I decided how do I learn about fentanyl? How do I find out from those who were directly impacted? So I decided to do a tour. I started in Goldendale, Washington, had a couple hundred people which is surprising because it's small, and just gave them the mic. We also brought Narcan, trained it, and handed it out to anyone there who wanted it. So my parents, for example, have Narcan in their jockey box. They're in their 80s. We also decided that we needed to go. The Yakima Nation reached out and said, would you come do the same thing? We heard you did this in Goldendale. Can you please come to Toppenish? Came to Toppenish, and there were 200, probably 250 people who we had four hours of heartbreaking testimony of how it had impacted their lives, themselves, their children, their family members who had overdosed, and just tried to take as many notes as we could to make sure we move forward. Lastly, I, the missing piece was the homeless population, so I went to Camp Hope in Yakima, Washington, and spent four hours in a tent at night with 231 residents that night who came to tell their story and how it had touched their lives. This bill that's called Ivan's Law touches and took the notes and compiled them into a smaller list, of course, because there were thousands of things the state can do to fix this. The first thing was to make sure that we knew that this is a, this is a pill, this is a, a powder, this is something that you can't do even once. Other drugs, many people can do once and then quit. Fentanyl takes over your life and it takes you down a spiral that's almost impossible to get back out and can even lead to death, in, as in Ivan's case. We learned from many people that said, I didn't know I couldn't do it just once and try it. So it does a campaign with Department of Health to make sure across the state of Washington, people know you cannot do this more than once. It also looks at decontamination of vehicles that have had fentanyl in there. We heard many families their son, daughter, had gotten in the car with their friends to go smoke fentanyl, came home, and not knowingly in the morning, the mom or dad would get in the vehicle, put the car seats in the back seat with their grandkids or their children, and the whole family would be sick as they drove. So we've got to figure out a way to figure out what is this fentanyl contamination doing to our vehicles in Washington State. We have stolen vehicles, which we're very grateful to get back. We don't get back enough, but when we do, often we can detect fentanyl. We have police vehicles at auctions we're selling. We have to make sure they are not harmful when those people get those. So it asked the WASPIC to do the work and to compile information and give that information out so that we can move forward next session with a solution. Last thing I learned repeatedly was my favorite and most heartbreaking. I was in the tent, Camp Hope, and there was a gentleman who came up at the end and said, can I have the mic? And I said, absolutely. He had been in and out of the system. He was in and out of prison for fentanyl. And he had, he said, you're completely doing this wrong in the state of Washington. And I said, great, teach me. Like, what do I need to know that I don't know? And he said, I'm on the street. And he said, you come up to me and you say, do you want to go to jail or do you want to go to treatment? And we decide a path. And he said, I'm high. He said, why are you asking me what I want to do with my life at a time when I'm unable to make a good decision about my life? He said, we go to jail. He said, I'm always going to pick jail. If I go to jail, I can get out in a few days. You're going to let me back out. He said, I'll go through detox. I'll get out. And my dealer will be parked outside with the car running to give me a ride. So he said, we're going to pick jail to get on the drug. But in Yakima, there was a great correction officer that stopped by the cell when he was detoxing and said, I see you're getting better now. How do you feel? And he said, I'm OK. And he said, do you want treatment now? And he said, absolutely. He, was, he said I was sober. And he said, 
It's the only reason I'm standing here talking to you guys tonight. So we can do a better job. This bill addresses those three things. Really hope that it continues to move through the system. The other bill briefly just is about fentanyl, making sure that our dogs in Washington State are detecting fentanyl. Currently a dog will walk by and untrained will not know that there's fentanyl there. They will not know that they need to alert for it and they could be in danger of the fentanyl doses that we see. So this bill's moving forward. We're also really happy about that. And just lastly, I wanna make sure that all of you can please help me share that we don't want people to die to get high. So please make sure that if ask them to not do that and to ask for us for help instead. We're all here to help. Thank you very much.